Hold on. I left the sound on. Otherwise, you're going to hear, yeah. There's not what I want to hear right now after this show. Uh, hello there. I'm Scotty. You're not. Welcome to Wrestling Corner, where we talk all things wrestling. WWE, AW, WCW, ECW. Doesn't matter. She's gay. We talk about wrestling, and today we're talking about Money in the Bank 2023, and... A lot of good things. One big bad thing that I'm gonna blow. I already blew a gasket, but it's gonna get worse because the wrong guy won. I'm just saying. But yeah, money in the bank. Uh, and to look at this show, it doesn't look like it's really anything special. They had to book they booked the, the Bloodline Civil War because the Usos turned on Roman. <clears throat> You know, they had to book it a big name because, you know, it's already, it was spoiled like months ago that this is what direction they were going. So, <clears throat> we had to do that. But, uh, yeah. So, we start off with the seven men money in the bank lottery match for the men. It is Mer Logan Paul, Ricochet, Santos Escobar. I can't remember anyone else. I cannot remember anyone else. That's four, right? Like I said, Logan Paul Ricochet Santos Escobar. I know one more, but I'm gonna wait till the end for that one. Um I can't remember anyone else. What the fuck? Why can't I remember anyone else? Damien Priest. Um I just thought of one. Uh, it's four. You need three more. L.A. Knight. Yeah. Two. Uh, L.A. Knight was the one that I was waiting for the end, but uh, three more. I can't remember. You can tell they have one of the women's, but not the men's. I don't know. Let me say women's, though. Two more. Who was it? Must not be any big ones, but I can't remember who they are. Go the SmackDown roster. Go the Raw roster. Okay. So right around SmackDown here. Raw, Damian Priest. SmackDown had Damian Priest, Ricochet, Shinsuke Nakamura. Or on and Logan Paul. Or on SmackDown, Santos Escobar, LA Knight, and one more. Who was it? Because it was even until Logan Paul came in. I don't remember who it was. I'm kind of looking around here. And yes, it, I realized it took me a long time to think of Shinsuke Nakamura. He's right freaking here. Um, wasn't Goldberg. It wasn't The Undertaker. Uh, certainly wasn't Hulk Hogan. I don't remember who it was. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, this match was good. It was the first match of the night. It had to be good. It was good until the ending. So, going into this, <clears throat> I was convinced that the two winners of the Money Bank Leonard matches are going to be LA Knight and EO Sky. Also, 2K did this locker code on 2K23, and the two cards you got from it was LA Knight and EO Sky. So, that told me, hey, I think they're winning. So I was pretty convinced that <clears throat> LA Knight was winning this match. And there was a lot of cool moments in this. They did a thing. Sorry about that. I swear I heard someone a noise, someone talking. Anyway, um, <clears throat> there was a moment where someone did hit. Hit Shinsuke Nakamura. They hit him, and then with, with the ladder, and they hit him, and then they put it like a ladder bridge. When they do the thing where they stick it in the middle of the ladder, and then on the rope, and I went, "That looks so stupid," because it's like hit Shinsuke. I'm gonna say leave this here, and they do something similar in a women's match too. But in that one, 
they missed who they were going after, and it stuck into that, which looked better to me. But you know, but we get down to the finals. People, at one point, like Logan Paul was knocked out of the ring with someone, and someone threw a bottle of Prime at him, which is kind of funny. But uh, we get to the end, and obviously L.A. Knight should win. He climbs up. Damian Priest comes up there. He hits the whatever Dark Arrow, whatever it's called. And it climbs back up and wins. And I went, no. I got I got pissed because LA Knight should win. I am sick and tired of them not pushing him. He deserves more than this. And there are people trying to, like, people I was looking online after, like, oh, he doesn't need that briefcase. You know how great he would be with the briefcase, though? I mean, come on. The only reason why they're doing a Damian Priest thing is so that they can have Issues in the bloodline, in the bloodline. Issues in the Judgment Day, which are not needed. Just let them stay together. I don't know why we have to break up factions all the time. I don't get it. I don't get it. Just leave them together. They're fine the way they are. They've barely been together a year, and they're like, oh, let's break them up. It's, you know, maybe they've been together at least a year, but still, come on, just leave them up. Yeah, so that sucked. Damian Priest doesn't deserve it at all. LA Knight deserved it more than anyone. The only person who deserved to win that briefcase is LA Knight. I'm not saying that because I'm a fan, although I kind of am. He's the only one that deserved it. I mean, if you heard the crowd last night when he came out on SmackDown, this guy is ridiculously over and needed that briefcase. And now they just gave it to Damian Priest. And... I'm convinced. I was thinking about this role play review. I'm convinced that there was a last minute change. Maybe by Vince. I don't think so. I think maybe Damien or um, LA Knight and EO Sky were the ones that are supposed to win. And that's what they told 2K. And those are the cards they put up. Then Vince McMahon decided he wanted to push Logan Paul to win. Triple H said, no, it's going to LA Knight. But Vince wouldn't sign off on it, so they agreed on Damian Priest. That's what it, that's what I think happened. So, yeah, because do that stupid ass deal with Endeavor. Vincent Man has been put back in charge. He has the last call on stuff, I guess. You know, Triple H supposed to have last call with Creative. I don't know. They, they, I think it's the dumbest decision to keep Vince on. They should have let him leave. But what do I know, right? The next match was, what was it? Wasn't Intercontinental Championship match, I don't think. Was it the women's tag type, tag title match? I think it was. So it was Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler versus Liv Morgan and Raquel Gonzalez. And the ending to this match made no fucking sense, okay? You have this match, throughout the whole match, Ronda and Shayna are working good as a tandem. And then all of a sudden, I don't know which was the end of the match. Shayna turns on Ronda, puts her in a carefully to clutch, and then leaves. And Liv and uh, Raquel end up beating her and winning tag titles. And I just went, okay, one. This should have happened before WrestleMania. Now, I, I never did the video where I was going to say what match should have happened, but the whole Charlotte Flair coming back before WrestleMania. Winning the title and then going on to face Rhea Ripley. Now, that was done because Rhea Ripley was always going to challenge for the SmackDown Women's title for some fucking reason. And she was going to challenge Ronda. Ronda said no. I think that it should have been Shayna Baszler. I think that Ronda should have been a champion at this point and they're booking them as a team or whatever. Shayna wins the Royal Rumble. And the two have issues. You know? Or she comes up second in the Royal Rumble. And that, you know, Ronda's just like, oh, it's okay. You don't need that anyway. You got me, you know, thing. And then it causes problems. And they face each other at WrestleMania. That's, you know, they should have faced each other at WrestleMania. Now they're setting up a SummerSlam match, I guess. But this feels like too little too late. And also... I don't think that Shayna should be the heel in this situation. 
and this makes her look like a heel. They're going to turn Ronda babyface, and I think Ronda is a better heel. So Shayna should be the babyface. She should come out on SmackDown or Raw on Monday and be like, I got sick of your crap. I'm always living in your shadow. I got sick of it. Play it up like she's a baby face. Don't make her a heel. It works better if she's a baby face. The rest of the match, it was fine. Next, we got a match that was rumored to be the main event, but thank God wasn't. Cody Rhodes versus Dominic Mysterio. Look, I did not care about this match. And why? Are WWE, it's, why is WWE upset, obsessed with having a video package for fucking everything? They had it for this match! A match that I'm sure nobody cares about. Like when it, when it was announced that this was the next feud, when he's waiting for Brock Lesnar to come back. And by the way, what the hell's going on with Lesnar? I was sure Lesnar was going to show up and attack Cody. Like, I, I had a better plan. My idea was better. Even if he did come back and attack Cody, my plan is better. Cody's in the main letter match. He goes to climb up. He goes to grab the briefcase. Brock Lesnar music goes off, distracts him. He gets knocked down. Lesnar comes out, gives him an F5. LA Knight wins the briefcase. Of course, there's always going to be LA Knight that wins. For me, anyway. But, yeah, I don't know. This was just weird. I mean, it was a decent match, and Dominic is getting better, but... Cody won, obviously. I thought it was too long. I, I joked when the match started. Okay, uh, hit a Cody Cutter, hit the crossroads, one, two, three. Let's get on with this. It just happened, I guess. Uh, but yeah, the match was decent. And then after this, something really weird happened. We're, we're getting, I thought we were getting ready for the wins win to make a lot of match. They have a little commercial thing. They come back. And John Cena's music hits. We're like, huh? What? What? John Cena. He comes out. And he's basically he's trying to. Basically, this is them having John Cena come out and try to pitch a WrestleMania in the United Kingdom. So he comes out. He, he Well, WrestleMania wasn't is in London. wasn't in the UK. Then Rickerson Waller comes out and wants to do it in Australia. But listen, I don't care about Lund about UK getting to WrestleMania. I don't care about Australia getting to WrestleMania. Bring WrestleMania to Minnesota, bitches. I mean, come on, we got a stadium now. We got US Bank Stadium. It's big enough, right? Bring it to the Twin Cities. Come on now. You know how fast I would try to get a ticket to that? I don't know how successful I would be and how I would get there because I don't drive, but at WrestleMania in Minnesota, Come on. I'd sit in the freaking nosebleeds just to say I went to a WrestleMania. You know? And another thing, we won, we won a Super Bowl in WrestleMania too, by the way, NFL. You came close and then you switched it. You know? But anyway. Yeah. That's basically all it was. And then Grayson Waller attacked him. It didn't work. And John Cena hit the AA, which, you know. I'm just confused because Cena said he was done. Actually, wait, I think I think there was another match before this, actually. Riddle versus Gunta. Good match. Of course, they focused on Riddle's broken ankle or whatever. But my problem is, Riddle, you have a busted ankle. Put on some boots, my man. I mean, it's absolutely stupid he comes out there barefoot when he's got a messed up ankle. I understand that's what he does and his storytelling, which... I, 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 to be honest, I'm sick of storytelling where, oh, there's an injury. We have to play it out. Like with Cody and his broken arm. That, they played it out so much. Like, I don't know. I know when it's just a minor injury like that or even a foot thing. I'm just sick of it. We don't need to play on every little injury thing. And it's, and it's even worse when you're doing two at the same time. Because Cody was still selling his arm until that match. And then we get to this and he's selling, and Riddle's selling his foot. I don't know. But the John Cena thing, to finish that up, it was fine. I just don't understand why he was there. But yeah. Gun we'll, we'll do this. Gunta versus Riddle. We'll do that match next. Um, like I said, it was a good match. Not to back and forth. Um, 
So where the hell was Randy Orton? Like, it was heavily rumored Randy was going to make a return. He never showed up. I was convinced that what was going to happen was after Gunther won the match, or, yeah, after Gunther won the match because he thought he was going to win, you have Imperium come back out there. They're beating the crap out of him. Orton comes out. That thing. Now we get John Cena. Okay. We get the women's money in the bank ladder match. And this one, I think I know all the competitors. We got Trish Stratus, Zoe Stark, EO Sky, Bailey, um, Zelina Vega, and Becky Lynch. Right? My pick was, of course, EO Sky, and I was right this time. Uh, they had this. The issue here is I think the Money in the Bank a lot of matches work better when it's just six or seven random people thrown together. Like I feel like the men's Money in the Bank a lot of match was better because it was just seven random guys throwing themselves around. I know they had a thing with Shinsuke Nakamura and Ricochet and Bronson Reed who didn't show up for some reason. I thought he was going to show up and do. I don't know. I don't know what the point that was, but. Uh, yeah, no, no, over on the uh, women's, you had um, Io and Bailey, who were kind of at his ankle, and then you had um, Zoe Stark, uh, Becky Lynch, and Trish Stratus, which was another angle. And while it worked at one point, uh, Trish and Zoe Stark brought out handcuffs and was handcuffed Becky Lynch but weren't able to get her on the rope thing and then eventually Io was able to use that to handcuff her to Bailey because Bailey it was it was a fun little moment but sometimes you watch these and you see these moments and you go yeah but she had the briefcase and you could have ended it there this was cool but it could have been done sooner because Io went up she was ready to get the briefcase and Bailey knocked the ladder down and pushed her off and then Bailey starts to climb up. Becky comes in, and Io gets back up, and she handcuffs them together in the middle of the ladder. She climbs up Bailey and grabs the briefcase. Yeah, that was cool, but could have been done sooner. Like she could have just grabbed it. You didn't need to have extra. We would have been wondering where the the handcuffs went. Oh, by the way, because I know Big Ot is going to bring it up, and I just remembered, Logan Paul went through one table. He was throwing two double tables, but one did not break, and the other one did. So, in that match, yeah. But this was good. I think it was decent. It was good. But I do, I do like the match just a little bit better. Just the storyline thing for me bogged it down too much for me. Like, I understand what they're doing, but I don't know. And then we have the World Heavyweight Championship match Finn Balor. Versus Seth Rollins. Missed opportunity. A missed opportunity. I think. Now I understand that Seth Rollins just won the title. And I did pick him to win. However. There are some times where you have someone in mind to win. And as the match goes on you decided. Oh it wouldn't be too bad if the other guy wins. And there was a moment. Where Finn Balor was going. Especially now that we know Damian Priest had the briefcase. That I would think. What if Finn Balor wins. And like Seth Rollins is mad and hits him with a stomp. And then Damian Priest comes out and catches in on him. That would be going to set up a feud or something. But no, instead, Damian Priest walks out in the middle of the match because they're coming back to Seth Rollins. And he just sits on a chair. And just as Finn Balor is about to win, Damian Priest stands up and distracts him. I'm so sick of distraction, Finch. Just come on. And then Seth Rollins. He goes up for the coup de gras. He moves out of the way. Seth Rollins hits a stomp. One, two, three. Yeah. He won. Fine. But I don't know. Something inside me wanted to see Finn win the title just to have it taken from him. Which, if you're going to have Roman hold that title for a long time, quick title switches like that would be cool. I don't know. I still think Ellen and I should have won the match, though. I'm saying. Then the final match of the night, Roman Reigns and Solo Sikoa versus the Usos Bloodline Civil War, which they said about a million freaking times. This was good. 
once I woke up. Look, it's, I know, it's only 5 o'clock here by the time this match started. Central Standard Time in the U.S. Because they're over there in, in London, England, by bye. And they're, you know, it's nighttime there, which, look, it's confusing for me, all right? For someone who's in the middle, it's broad daylight, middle of the day, and you have Michael Gross saying, tonight, tonight! And I'm like, it's the middle of the day. Even DeGroby's sitting there going, but it's the night for them. I understand that. But for us, it's not. They should say, and tonight, the day for you folks in the U.S. That sort of thing. But I don't know. But yeah, the Bloodline Civil War. This was good. All right. There is a moment that you think it's over, right? The U.S.L.s are fighting their asses off. And eventually, you know, they do a moment where they do a ref bump. I'm so sick of ref bump. I don't, why is every Roman Reigns match have to have a ref bump? I'm just so sick of them. And every Dan Angle is going to have to have an extra paycheck, an extra money in his paycheck for this. I, Because he's just getting knocked on his ass by an ass. Because, like, during the moment, Roman Reigns' ass goes right into Dan Angle and knocking him out of the ring. And why do I know his name is Dan Angle? Because Michael Cole, for some reason nowadays, it just calls out the referees' names. So I, I know names like Brian Tran, Dan Angler, and Jessica Carr because he'll he'll mention the referees' names for a reason. It's giving them recognition. That's cool. And I guess they just do that in the past, but it seems like he's doing it more and more nowadays. I don't know. It's fine. But anyway, so after the ref bump, the Usos hit the one D on was it Solo or Roman? One of the two. I want them. But there's no one there. I think it was Roman. Solo gets back in the ring and he starts attacking. And then they, uh, he spikes Jimmy, I think it is. And then it has Jay. And there's a double spike to a spear. A spike from Solo and a spear. Stacks them both on top of each other. One, two, they both kick out. And like, you thought that was the end. Even we were like, oh, oh what? Yeah, and then they do it again. It's another thing. Roman has, I think it's Jay this time. And he hits the spear. He goes for the pin, but Jay, Jay's arm is in between his legs when he kicks out. He hits him right in the borders. And then at this point, Solo had tried to do a jump off the guardrail. Uh, off of... Barry Barricade onto uh, the announce table and um, Jimmy moved so he just splashed himself onto the table and then both of us get in and do a double super kick double super kick 1D 1, 2, 3 the Usos won and then he got BLT and the Groby saying they want uh, Dan Priest to come out I don't think that's going to happen. But they make a big deal. People in commentary, Michael Cole makes a big deal about how Roman has not been pinned one-on-one. -on -one, has not been pinned in a match since 2019. Which, I think that was Baron Corbin was the last one to pin him. <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention, after the Gunta match, Drew McIntyre came back. Which I was like, wait, what? What? This is supposed to be around your... I actually couldn't care less about Drew McIntyre right now. Because honestly, I thought he was going to come back. They're saying he's going to come back as a heel. So I thought he was going to come back and challenge Seth Rollins. But he's back doing the same shit he was doing before he left. So if it was a contract negotiation problem, well, he didn't get much farther than what he was doing before. Now again, they want to have Gunther versus Drew at SummerSlam. Hopefully... You know what I mean? But yeah. And there was no women's singles championships on the line for some reason. They they had a, a women's championship match last night on SmackDown. You could have done it tonight. Today. What a... You could have put that on there instead of the Cody and Dominic match. And I think the issue with Cody and Dominic was we want Cody on this pay-per-view, but Brock's not going to work it. And so we need a match for him to be in. 
So, um, <clears throat> put him in the money in the bank ladder match. Duh. You know what I mean? It, I don't know. It just, I don't know. This pay-per-view was fine for me. It wasn't anything big. But for, for one of those, um, I know they were trying to make Money in the Bank one of the big five, but it really hasn't soared to those heights yet. So for one of those B-show pay-per-views, it was actually not that bad. And for the first time ever, we have a women's uh, Money in the Bank winner that hasn't cashed in on the same night. Or well, maybe she'll cash in tomorrow. I don't know. Probably not. But maybe I'm... But I don't know. Like, well, I guess... I guess Nikki ass... N Nikki's ass. Nikki Nikki S H. Excuse me. She cashed in the next night, but it still wasn't, you know, anything. And then Carmella, what? <clears throat> but uh, yeah, it was fine for what it was. I enjoyed it. Middle of the day, I get to have my lunch at late lunch. Chili dogs. I'm good. Go back and use the toilet later. Yeah, um, so what are your thoughts on Money to Make 2023? Leave my comments, let me sure like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'm Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.